However, preaching can, cannot always be true. Because we have Hindus that preach, we have Buddhists that preach, we have Muslims that preach, we have Christians who preach, and the list goes on. And we have politicians who preach. <laughs> the point is, this is an academic debate. I raised many questions which you didn't address. You went straight into the Bible and started quoting. And my point was that the Bible or the New Testament which you quoted extensively isn't from God. It doesn't even come from God. And it doesn't even come from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and even Paul. We don't have what they wrote. This is an open challenge. I really want Cecil to come back and address this point. Can he today tell us with certainty that we have the exact copy of what Paul wrote in his epistles? To this day, ladies and gentlemen, Christian scholars debate as to whether Paul wrote some of his epistles or not. The Gospel of John, which Cecil quoted from extensively, there's a debate about this Gospel as to who wrote it. Is it John the son of Zebedee? Or is it John of Ephesus? Christians to this day, scholars, don't know who wrote the Gospel of John. How can we even claim that it comes from God? I can quote from Gita or, uh, or Vedas or other books or Hitler's Mein Kampf and say Hitler was from God. Would you believe me? Answer my question. No. If I said that Hitler was a messenger of God, God forbid, would you believe me? No, you wouldn't. I can make this claim. You have to show us this all today, that what you read as the word of God is from God. And we know for certain that it's not even from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Paul, let alone God. It's not from them. But even if we accept that these people wrote representing God and they were directly inspired by God and what they wrote was preserved in codices, codices and it came to us in a preserved form even if we accept that which is not the case for certain which Cecil didn't actually address even if we accept does his argument do they stand Thomas said to Jesus Christ when he saw him my Lord my God okay we have other people who are called, called God in the Old Testament we go to the book of Psalms Chapter 82, verse 6, all the Israelites are called gods. Gods. The word gods is there. In the book of Exodus, chapter 7, verse 1, Moses <coughs> is called God. I made thee a, a god to Pharaoh. It's there. So he's also God then in that sense. If Jesus is God, because Thomas called him God, if he did. Firstly, we don't know whether Thomas ever said that. We don't even know if John wrote it. We don't even know who put it in. Paul and Anderson wrote a book titled The Gospel of John, the fourth gospel and historical Jesus. He states in his works that the Gospel of John as it stands today doesn't even come from one hand. There are so many editors who edit stuff into this gospel. John 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God. And, word, and the Word was in God and the Word itself was God. Yes. And if we go to the Greek of this particular verse, we see there the word we have for that word was God is theos, without any definite article. And that same word God that is mentioned in the previous part of the verse, in the beginning of the word, and the word was with God, there we have John Theos, with a definite article, the God with capital G. But when we come to the part where it states that word itself was God, there is no definite article, meaning God with small g, a God. Five minutes. But in the Bible, we read God with capital G. These Bibles are translated theologically, they are theologically driven, driven texts. <coughs> Responding to some of the comments or some of the arguments made by Cecil from the Bible, even though it's not, it's not from God, we go on to refute these points. His disciples and he are one. Jesus said that I and the Father are one, but then he also said, my disciples and I are one. John 17, 21, 22. So his disciples are all from all God. <clears throat> okay? Is that clear? Then we move on. His powers came from God. Jesus said that himself. In the Gospel of Luke 11, 20, in the Gospel of John 5, 30, whereby Jesus Christ states that I can of my own self do nothing. 
If this is how God talks, I can, of my own self, do nothing. It is my Father who causes me to do things. This is Jesus Christ talking. Then, increased in favor with God. Jesus Christ was increased in favor with God. In the Gospel of Luke 2.52 we read that. He was increased in favor. If it was God from eternity, how was he increased in favor? That's the question I asked. It's a philosophical question which you have to address when you come back. Ignorant of the last hour, of the hour. He didn't know when the hour was. And this can be found in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, also Mark 13.32. When he was asked about the hour, the judgment day, he said, I do not know. Even the angels don't know. Only the Father knows when the hour is. So this is not God. At least at that time, Jesus Christ was not God. Because God knows everything. Do we believe that? Yes. Yes. Do we all believe that? Yes. God knows everything. At that time, he wasn't God. He was not God at that time. When he said, I don't know when the hour is. He said, only the Father knows. So if he's of the same essence as the Father, he should have known the answer and he should have given the answer, which he didn't. Look, and we move on. Jeremiah pre-existed. Just for me to point that, because he said that before Abraham um, was, I am, he pre-existed that, therefore he's God. But we have Jeremiah pre-existing in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 4 to 5. Then we have Paul pre-existing before he was born in Galatians 1, 15. Okay, we move on. Then we had miracles, and because of those miracles, Jesus was God. But then we have other people who gave life to dead people. Peter gave life to the dead. Acts 9, Elijah went up to heaven alive. 2 Kings 2, 11. And Jesus' disciples can also forgive sins. If he was God because he forgave sins, his disciples can also forgive sins according to John 20, 23. Melchizedek had no father, no mother, no beginning, no end. He also pre-existed. King Melchizedek, according to the book of Hebrew 7, 3. Why is Jesus so special? If he's God, because of the reasons you stated. Others are also called Lord in the Old Testament, for example. In the book of Genesis, chapter 40, 42, 10. In the book of Ruth, chapter 2, verse 13. Zechariah 1, Chapter 1, verse 9, and the list goes on. Other people were called Lord in the Old Testament. One minute. Others were also worshipped. If Jesus was worshipped, and for that reason he's God, there are other people who were worshipped in the Bible, such as in the book of 1 Samuel 28, sorry, chapter 24, verse 8, people were worshipped. 2 Samuel 24, 20, 2 Kings 2, 15, Ruth 2, 10, and the list goes on. Then Elisha healed lepers, 2 Kings 15, 14. Then we go on. There are other problems. One of the biggest problems is that if Jesus is God, can he be tempted by God, uh, by the devil? In the book of James, the epistle of James, we are told that God cannot, cannot be tempted by the devil. I'm finishing my point. God cannot be tempted by the devil. Here we have in the New Testament, where Jesus Christ was tempted by the devil. How did that happen? And in the Gospel of Mark, you will find that, chapter 1, verse 12 to 13, and Luke 4, 13, you will see that Jesus Christ was tempted by the devil. And in the book of James, we are told that God cannot be tempted by the devil. Now, please come and respond to these points and the points I made in my presentation. Thank you so much.